I'm here to show you that you have the power to transform your outdated kitchen into a truly stunning space that you will love to be in. You can do this and it is totally worth it because it will drastically change your home for the better. We have painted many kitchens over the years, including our own, so we have lots of valuable information to share on how to get it done properly. We will be sharing lots of tips, products, and information with you in this video, including what paint is best for painting kitchen cabinets. Follow these few kitchen cabinet painting steps to ensure a long-lasting professional finish. The very first thing that you should decide in this project is whether you plan on hand painting everything or using a paint sprayer. We highly recommend using a paint sprayer because it is such a large project. You can get a nice quality base level paint sprayer for around $80 to $100, which is worth every penny with a project like this because it saves you so much time. They are easy to get the hang of and you can use them again for future projects like bathroom cabinets, furniture, or many other home improvement projects, but we'll talk more about that in a bit. When you're ready to begin the work, the first thing that you're going to do is make a diagram of your kitchen cabinets. It doesn't have to be perfect, just make sure that you can understand it. Assign every door and drawer a code and then label each one using painter's tape and a Sharpie. This will ensure that you reinstall all of the doors and drawers in the correct spot at the end. Next, remove all of the doors and drawers and transfer them to your garage, basement, or another work area because this project will take a week or two depending on how much time you have to dedicate to it. In case you didn't know, cabinet drawer faces are easily removed by unscrewing them from the inside. Also, be sure to remove all of the hardware and hinges and store them together for safekeeping. Now it is time to clean all of the surfaces that you intend to paint to remove any grease or grime that could prevent the paint from adhering correctly. Once you start scrubbing, you'll see that kitchen cabinets are always dirtier than they look. Our favorite cleaner for this step is an industrial grade degreaser called Liquid TSP because it also dulls the finish on your cabinets but isn't harsh to work with. Make sure it's the liquid one and not the powder. For scrubbing, remove the painter's tape label, transfer the code to the spots covered up by the hinge, and then recover the code again so that it won't get painted over. If your doors don't have a spot like that, try to keep the label near the door while you're working on it. It's okay to get the doors wet as long as the moisture doesn't sit on the wood for too long. Make sure you towel dry each one before moving on to the next. We built these drying racks when we painted another large kitchen and needed somewhere to put the doors and drawers during the whole project. Of course, building something like this is not necessary, but it can really help you confine and organize all of your cabinet doors. We'll link two YouTube videos by other creators in the description that show you how to make them. Whether you choose to spray or hand paint your kitchen cabinets, these racks come in handy throughout your project. We placed our kitchen cabinet doors on these racks after washing and drying them, and then we also use them again later while painting the doors. While cleaning all of your cabinet boxes in your kitchen, give special attention to cleaning the floor right along the edges of your cabinets. This will ensure that the painter's tape that you will put down in the next step will stick well and not curl up later in the process, especially when painting. Now that everything is clean, the next step is to cover up everything that you don't want to get paint on. Covering everything with paper and plastic will also help control some of the dust that you will create while sanding in the next step. This process will be slightly different if you're hand painting versus spraying. If you choose to spray your cabinets, you will need to cover more of the surrounding surfaces. But even if you're hand painting, be sure to cover your countertops and floors with builder's paper to protect them. When we painted our kitchen cabinets, we chose to spray them, so we removed all of our drawers and stored them in the garage. We covered them with plastic sheeting to keep the dust off of everything. Then the cabinets got covered up with this 3M brand masking plastic that comes pre-lined with tape. Covering the inside of your cabinets is essential if you choose to spray them. You could choose to paint the inside of your cabinets, but in most cases, the inside of your cabinets are still in good condition, and painting them is double the amount of work in this already large project. We did paint the inside of our two cabinets that have glass doors. To cover them, start by putting a piece of tape along the bottom edge of the cabinet, and then put a piece of tape along the inside edge of the cabinet with the sticky part facing out. Then tape a piece of the 3M plastic to the top, unfold it and stick it to the tape border that you created. Add any extra painter's tape to secure it and you'll be all set. You can also use this plastic to cover appliances that you still want access to in between coats of paint. This is what our kitchen looked like after this step. 
We didn't cover the walls or the backsplash since we planned on painting our walls and replacing the backsplash. Decide on how much coverage you need in your kitchen based on the needs of your project. Soon it will be time to scuff sand the wood, but right before that, we recommend puttying any holes or imperfections since that putty will also need to be sanded. It's best to do all of your sanding at one time. If you plan on changing your hardware and need to change your existing hardware holes, now would be the time to putty or drill any new holes based on your handles or knobs. When it comes to switching handles, it's much easier to find new handles with the same distance between screws so that you can reuse the existing holes. Don't wait until all the painting is completed to drill new hardware holes to avoid doing touch-ups at the end. We highly recommend Bondo All-Purpose Putty because it dries very hard, very fast. We switched from knobs to handles in our kitchen, so we used the existing hole and drilled a second one. And as for our drawers, we covered up the existing hole and just drilled new ones for the handles. Next is one of the most important steps in this process to get a long lasting professional finish. Scuff sanding your cabinets and doors will help the new paint finish last for many years to come. You may think why not start with sanding and then do the cleaning so that it cleans up the dust, but sanding your cabinets first can cause dirt and grime to be caked deep down into your surface. Sanding also makes your wood more vulnerable to water, so we always recommend first cleaning, then covering your surfaces, and then sanding. You can use 220 grit sandpaper and either sand everything by hand, which is time consuming, or use a sander. But if your cabinets have decorative details or crown molding like ours, a regular sander won't work in those areas. But don't worry, we have a way to solve that problem. Let me introduce you to our Surf Prep Sander. This sander has saved us countless hours of hand sanding because it can do what no other sander can. It can easily and effectively, and most importantly, quickly sand any grooves, edges, or corners. The sanding pads contour to any decorative molding, making it possible to sand all of the doors and drawers without the painful, time-consuming hassle of hand sanding. If you are considering painting your kitchen or if you do a lot of DIY projects around your home, this sander can save you so much time and effort. We purchased the sander over a year and a half ago, and when the folks at Surf Prep heard that we are big fans and that we are sharing our love of the sander with you, they offered you a discount code of 10% off using the code VINTAGEHIP10. All the details will be linked in the description for you. We are grateful that we purchased the sander because it greatly sped up the process of sanding 45 doors and drawers. My dad used our orbital sander to scuff up the flat surfaces while I took care of sanding all of the edges and decorative molding. Our surf prep sander also came in very handy with sanding the cabinet boxes because the small footprint is perfect for sanding all of the thin edges of the kitchen cabinets. I was able to quickly sand all of the curves and grooves of the crown molding and navigate the tight corners with ease. The Surf Prep Sander can hook up to a small vacuum hose, which is a big help with managing the dust, making it a great sander to use indoors. After completing the sanding, wipe down all of your cabinets with microfiber cloths and denatured alcohol to remove any dust. A step that will make your final result look super polished and professional is to fill in any gaps or nail holes with caulk. This small and easy step makes such a difference in the kitchen's overall look. You can do this right before or after the first coat of primer. Sometimes the first coat of primer helps highlight areas that need filling. Speaking of primer, it's time to start painting. For primer, we highly recommend Smart Prime by Zinzer. We used it on our kitchen cabinets and our stair railing and absolutely loved how easy it went on. We were very impressed with this primer. Our kitchen project required just over two gallons of primer to cover everything with two coats, including painting both sides of the cabinet doors and drawers. It also did a fantastic job blocking our red cherry stain underneath from bleeding through the finish. No matter what primer or paint you choose, be sure to read and follow all of the instructions on the can. As we mentioned earlier, we opted to spray our kitchen cabinets instead of hand painting or rolling them because it's just so much faster. We have two paint sprayers from our days of painting furniture and kitchens, and both are linked for you. We linked a third sprayer for you that is also fantastic. It's from a very highly trusted paint sprayer brand named Wagner, and you can find it right on Amazon. Spraying all of the doors and drawers took roughly an hour and a half to two hours per coat, and we did two coats of primer and two coats of paint, and we did both sides of the doors and drawers. Painting it all by hand would take double that amount of time. 
You don't have to be experienced to use a paint sprayer. I tried it out for the very first time and it was pretty easy to pick up. The biggest learning curve was figuring out how much paint to spray at one time because too much will cause drips. But it's easy to get the hang of, which means it's doable for beginners. After all of your coats of primer have dried, lightly smooth it with a fine grit sandpaper before moving on to painting. We have painted 14 plus kitchens over the years, and our recommendation for the best paint to use on kitchen cabinets is Sherwin-Williams Emerald Trim Enamel in the Sheen Semi-Gloss. We typically don't gravitate towards semi-gloss, but Sherwin-Williams' semi-gloss sheen is not too shiny, and their satin sheen is not shiny enough for kitchen cabinets. All of the paint colors we chose for our kitchen will be listed in the description. We did two coats of paint on everything, including both sides of the doors and drawers. Again, no matter what paint you choose to use, read and follow the instructions carefully to get the best results. After all of your paint has dried, it is time to reinstall all of the doors and drawers. Keep some extra paint handy because it is normal for your high traffic kitchen to get a nick or two in the first month as the paint hasn't fully cured. Lightly sand the spot and touch it up with a small paintbrush with as many coats as needed to cover the area. We recommend saving this video so that you can reference it again to guide you through your project. Watch this video next to see our full kitchen makeover from start to finish, including changing the light fixtures, faucets, and backsplash.